tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we enter the wonderful world of sharks. We'll get to know a little bit about Hawaiian's cultural relationship with sharks, which in Hawaii are known as mano. We'll learn about some of the prominent species of sharks in Hawaii and learn how to draw and paint them too. I'll share a story with you about the day I learned to love sharks and how that experience influenced my art. All this and more on an awe-inspiring episode of Painting in Paradise! Sharks play an integral role in Hawaiian culture. They are a respected and revered being who many Hawaiians regard as family guardians or amakua. Niuhi is a name given to the large sharks that sometimes bite humans. Tiger sharks and great whites were both known as Niuhi. Sharks are fishes whose skeletons are made of cartilage. Their fins are rigid and muscles strong. They have gill slits, which in most species are five, but maybe up to seven in some species. They have nostrils, where you might expect to find nostrils, and eyes on the side of their head. The fins of sharks include the famous dorsal fin on top, two pectoral fins right behind the gill slits, two pelvic fins, which from the sides may look like one fin. The pelvic fins of the males have elongated claspers on them that are used in mating. A second dorsal fin on top, anal fin down below, and the tail, which is made of an upper caudal lobe and a lower caudal lobe. Of the sharks in existence today, the whale sharks are the biggest, with some specimens measuring over 45 feet. Whale sharks are plankton eaters. They do not eat large fish or animals and are considered the gentle giants of the shark world. I always like the way that whale sharks markings remind me of a long game of tic-tac-toe. The biggest predaceous sharks are known as the Great Whites, and though most of the Great Whites live in colder oceans, some of them do come to visit Hawaii. Great Whites can be recognized by their robust bodies, pointed noses, and the distinctly jagged line of color separating their upper and lower parts. Tiger sharks are the most common of Hawaii's large sharks. They can be recognized by their square-shaped noses, brownish color, and stripe patterns on the sides that give them the name Tiger Sharks. When I was a researcher on the remote atolls now known as Papahanaumokuakea, I watched in amazement as large tiger sharks came into shallow waters to feed on albatross chicks that had just started to fly. When the chicks landed in the water, the sharks would attack. Just before trying to bite them, 
the sharks would cover their eyes with a membrane to protect themselves against the flailing strikes of their prey. That rendered them temporarily blind and many times the birds escaped. But not always. Other species of sharks that live in Hawaii include hammerhead sharks. I always thought they were so cool. Gray reef sharks. Galapagos sharks. Sandbar sharks. And white tip reef sharks. The white tip reef sharks remind me of puppies. They can often be seen resting in caves on the ocean floor. I love to watch them swim, and it seems like they might have a little extra curve in their swagger. When we return, I'll show you how to draw a diving tiger and a turnback shark. So now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing a shark, but not just any shark. I'm going to do two sharks, okay? <laughs> I tell you what, I'll make a shark like diving down there so you got a straight profile of them. And I'll make another one doing kind of a turn back, you know, I like to call them a turn back shark. Like you're under the water looking up at a shark swimming and uh, you get to see his underneath and a little bit on top too. You ready? You ready? You ready? Everybody ready? <laughs> okay, let's go. Now remember when I start this off, I like to go softly. How are you going to press? Softly. softly. That's right. We press softly so we don't dig into our paper too much because in the beginning we like to form things up, kind of vaguely put things where they're going to go. And then later on when we got it just how we like it, we come back and do our final drawings. Whether that's pressing harder with a pencil or using a pen or whatever. You ready? Okay. Now I'm going to start this shark right here. Just kind of put a dot right in the middle, pink, of your paper, okay? Just a dot right there, pink. On this side of the dot, we're going to make a long, skinny oval. Just like that, okay? Keep it skinny, okay? Because you know that's going to be the front of the shark's body. Now I tell you what, halfway between this middle and that corner, let's put another dot, ping, right there, okay? And now let's make a kind of a triangle shape connecting this dot to that long skinny circle, okay? And we're forming up the shark's body. We've got that long skinny oval and we've got a long skinny triangle. Starting to see it? Yeah, yeah? <laughs> okay, I tell you what. Let's make the top of the tail go almost to the corner and this is going to be another long skinny triangle. Do you notice a pattern here with sharks? They got a lot of triangles in them yeah so let's make the top part of the tail kind of a very long triangle yeah now the bottom part can be a shorter triangle okay you see that and again this is just our form up lines they kind of show us where things are going to go but they don't have to be exactly the way we want them at the end now the shark has a very famous fin on top it's called a dorsal fin and it's just a big old triangle, okay? But they also got another triangle right here. Yeah, I think these are called the pectoral fins. And you can do a triangle right around here. Bing, 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 bing. Okay, and that's where the pectoral fin goes. Remember to press soft because we might erase or we might not use some of these lines. Remember that they're just a guide, okay? But wait, there's more, yeah. Let's give him a little more of a pointed nose. I'm going to make this one more of a white shark. Like a, a lot of shark species have different shaped noses. You know, some are very pointed. You know, our tiger sharks are very square looking. We'll do a white shark with a pointed nose, okay? Just give him a little more of a point there. Now we're going to give him a couple little more fins back here. This is going to be, a, I think it's a second dorsal fin. It's like a triangle too. And I think these got clasper fins and over there fins and I think we're all set. Now, what's another famous part of the shark? Not, not, not the mouth, yeah? And you can choose to make your mouth open or closed. I think I'll make it open with kind of like a, a thin triangle there too. Surprise, triangles, yeah? 
Hmm, might as well put in the maka. The maka is right there. And slits for the gills. Different species of sharks actually have different numbers of slits. And uh, I am going to guess at a shark, a white shark. <laughs> six, I don't know. I'm going to put six. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> okay, we'll go look that up afterwards. And one more fin I'm going to put in there is the back pectoral fin, okay? And right there, I just formed up my white shark. Okay, now that I got my shark formed up, I'm going to go over it with an even darker pen so you can see a little better. And when you got it to where you like, you can use a pencil and press a little harder or you can go get a pen and outline this too. Now remember that this is still just a guide, so if we do want to make adjustments on this, we can. So for instance, I'm going to make my shark's uh, belly area a little bigger, like oh, the bugger had eaten recently, you know, so I'm <laughs> not looking at me, huh? So I will start right down here at the belly, and I will make it a little bigger. Come up to the nose. All the way, I tell you what, I'll go all the way, all the way to the tail. Come up the tail. I'm going to give it a little bit of a like a little corner over there and shoom, connect those pieces together. And again, I'm going to make the belly a little bigger than I originally drew it right there. Okay, give them a little bit more, you know, opu, yeah? All right, now let's go make the dorsal fin. Come down. This can even have a little bit of a notch in there too. The second dorsal fin is another triangle. And the down here fin over there, and that fin over there. Um, for the pectoral fin, I'm going to leave part of it open, like it's connected to the body. I'm not going to close up that triangle. So here's how I'm going to do it. Down there. And I'll just leave that gap open a little bit, showing the viewer that this is connected to the body. It's a little bit in front. Speaking of in front and in back, I'm going to make that I just do that repeat the shape of the pectoral fin and make it look farther away later on I'll shade it a little bit make it look really farther away you ready for the mouth okay he's ready for the mouth yeah bugger is hungry or seen a little bit okay we'll make the maca maca's eye they do have a nostril and Let's see, I went and made the mouth a little bit open with that triangle. So let's repeat that triangle and, you guessed it, a bunch more triangles can go in this picture. Just make kind of a zigzag there. Yeah. <laughs> How's that looking, huh? Okay, now we got our gill slits. And what else can we do with this white shark? Well, you know, white sharks, they have a really distinct color difference between the top and the bottom. They have kind of a jaggedy line, yeah? And so I'm going to make that jaggedy line like that. Right through the gills. I'm going to... Okay? So when you're coloring it, you can put the top part nice and darker gray and the bottom part white. If it's underwater, it might kind of reflect the bluish colors of the white. And right there, I have my white shark diving down. <laughs> okay, now that we got our shark diving, let's have a little fun and make a different angle of a shark. Like I said, you're down in the water, you're looking up at the sky, and there's a shark doing a turn right above you, okay? I call it a turn back shark. You ready? All right, and I will form it up just like I do most of all of my drawings. I'll form it up with an oval like that and a little bit of a tail like this. Just a little bit, it looks almost like a comet, okay? So you got an oval, and a little tail. Now again, we'll make the top part of the tail fin nice and long. The bottom part a little shorter, okay? Long triangle on the top part of the tail. Bottom part of the tail can be a little shorter triangle. Um, for the pectoral fins, I'll make one coming out this way. And one right here. That might be a little tricky for some of you, but it's kind of like a triangle shape, yeah? Now for the dorsal fin, these are all different angles than we're used to. So we'll make that dorsal fin up there. We're also going to make a, maybe another dorsal fin there, there, and there, okay? Now the next thing we're going to do is put the mouth in. And 
I'll go make it right around there. And remember, this is from underneath view, yeah? Put the mocha and doo -doo -doo. some gill slits. And right there, I just formed up my turn back shark. Now I'm going to get a little bigger pen and I'll make this one a tiger shark, okay? And the way I'm going to tell people it's a tiger shark is I'm going to give it a nice square nose. So I'll start right here, right at the fin, come around, give it a little bit of a square nose. Alright, come around. Now I'll give it the pectoral fins, yeah, that one stops there. This one comes inside, but I'm not going to connect it totally, okay? The dorsal fin, and the underneath fins. Now for the mouth, I'm going to give it a little more of a square shaped mouth than a round pointed shape too. Okay, and same thing with the teeth, we can just do a little jaga jaga. Jaga 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 jaga. The maka, gill slits. Now for this shark, he's a tiger shark, we'll give him a little bit of striping going on, okay? And I'll just kind of divide it right up here, just kind of how we did with the white, but maybe down here we can show some stripes. They kind of disappear and they might reappear on this side. So there you have it. You have your white shark diving and your tiger shark turning back. Don't forget your signature. When we return, I'll show you how the time among sharks has influenced my art. When I was starting my career as an artist, my teachers told me never to paint sharks because people are afraid of them. And I was too. I'd seen sharks out where I was surfing from time to time, but that did not prepare me for what I experienced when I went to a place where sharks were everywhere. I spent a good part of my life doing research on remote islands that are now known as Papahanao Mokuakea. There are almost no humans on most of these islands and sharks are very abundant. I remember well a day that strengthened my love of sharks forever. This is a painting I call The Pool, and it's from memories of my days as a fish and wildlife ranger on the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. And these are little islands in Hawaii where people don't live, just a few biologists observe it. But otherwise, it's pristine without too much influence of people. The way this all started was pretty innocent enough. I saw a pair of eagle rays out there and I figured I'd get my underwater camera, swim out and take picture of these eagle rays which soon disappeared and were replaced by a shark that was circling me. And that shark became six sharks and, and uh, ten sharks and soon there were so many sharks I couldn't even see past them. It was just a wall of sharks and it was getting a little nerve wracking. I had my camera, I said, heck, at least I'm gonna get some pictures. If somebody finds my camera, they can see what happened to me. But um, under there, something amazing happened. I transformed from being afraid of sharks into seeing how beautiful they were, how perfect and majestic. And I just relaxed and uh, took pictures and got memories. And from then on, I was in love with sharks. This picture of the pool I've been saving in my mind for so many years. Now I'm putting it on canvas and I'm bringing it to you. Since that time, I've developed such an admiration for sharks and welcome every opportunity to include them in art. In Tahiti, I got a tattoo from a man named Tijote. I later saw a fantastic photograph by Patrick DeVault that reminded me of the tattoo. I asked Mr. DeVault if I could use his photograph as inspiration for my next painting called Manokai Blue. I used about four different blues to get the deep Hawaiian water color. And if you look closely in the water, you can see the subtle spot patterns that make up the tiger's stripes. When painting sharks, take note that their underparts are lighter and darker on top. 
This is true with most large ocean animals as it helps to camouflage them in the sea. When painting a shark, I usually start by painting the background or having someone else help me paint it. In this painting called Reef Guardian, I had fun painting loosely with more colors than you might see on a realistic shark. But doing whatever you want is part of the joy of art. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about sharks and how to draw and paint them. I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send a picture to aloha at patrickking.com. <laughs> Bye-bye.